first interview in I don't I don't I lost track of how how um, the last time we did an interview folks but it's the Zephyr reports F Daniel here my guest is brother Thomas and uh, so I think it's appropriate to start off the interview season with a guy who's been dedicated to the Lord dedicated to the prophetic dedicated to putting out uh, a, a, a blog consistently that has um, predicted many of the things, and on our shows, as those of you who've been around a while, you realize our shows back from uh, the way back time, um, he predicted, he, he said words like communism, communist takeover, uh, New World Order is communist, um, uh, the, 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 it's, it's a global revolution, you probably heard that. Uh, they've been infiltrating all this time and are ready to make their move. He's saying in 2005. He's been ridiculed for saying all that. He's basically five years ahead of his time. No, more than that. About seven or eight years ahead of his time. And and everything that he said, and some of you, I know there's some people I know you personally, that you've, you and I have marveled at how accurate Brother Thomas was and is. Uh, and those things have come to pass exactly as he said and he'd been following it for a good 10, 15 years before he ever spoke on the air. And he'd been trying to tell people about it. Uh, but no one really had, nobody understood. I mean, very few people understood. And, and you, you hear me on these podcasts I do every once in a while. I'll talk about Brother Thomas. And I'll just say, well, okay, in the prophetic community, um, from day one, he's been pretty much rejected, but he's the only one that was actually accurate. All the people doing the rejecting, they say, well, I had a vision uh, that this would happen, or the, and it never does. But then all these millions of people tune into their YouTubes, and, they, and then they do it again. So anyway, without further ado, here's my good friend, wayward friend, because we've been wayward friends. We've been off on our own tangents, but here we are again. Brother Thomas, welcome to the Zeph Report. How are you? Thank, thank you. Greetings, Earthlings, dog lovers, and Sasquatch. Yes. Got nice to be back. Nice to Sa talk to you again. Yeah, nice to talk to you, too. Well, I've been following from a distance, and, you know, it's... Likewise. I, I've been just trying to find out now the reason what I want to talk about today, you know, and I know there's some other things you want to talk about as well, but just right off the bat... How did you get the idea, or what happened that, I'll just rephrase that, 
what happened? A little rusty here. We're talking to. I haven't talked to anyone in three years. I've been holed up in this cave. Uh, but what made you look into this this idea that you were calling it communist before anyone else was? But this global takeover. What you know? And you weren't calling it the New World Order necessarily. You're saying the New World Order was this that you've been researching all those years. But what prompted you to start researching this takeover, as you call it? We called it. Yeah, uh, it was uh, in the mid '80s, and I became wow. uh, just politically aware. And what struck me is I couldn't understand why it seemed that every one of our policies in America, politically, always favored communism, always favored Russia and China, and and while while you know uh, proclaiming them as number one enemy. Um, it, it, it just baffled me. I thought it was very strange, and so I started looking into it. And um, I was in the music business in Florida, uh, recording at a uh, Almond Brothers studio. Butch Trucks, the drummer for the Almond Brothers, had a studio there, and I was in Tallahassee. And so I was recording at nights, but I was doing all this studying in the day. And I uh, I was also painting, and I I got a job for a guy. Uh, was a professor type of guy. He he left his house, left me in there to paint, and in his office. And he had papers and stacks of papers and posters and news clippings and all this stuff all around his office. And uh, I'm a curious guy. I didn't look through anything. It was all there. It was all just laying out. And I started looking at some of the headlines and some of the clippings he had in the shelf. And I realized that he was some type of a uh, socialist mucky muck uh, agitator professor guy. But uh, and it turned out when he came back, I, I, I feigned sort of naivete and ignorance to find out just who he was and what his deal was. And it turned out he was he was the, one of the principal photographers and agitators and documenters of the Student Democratic Society riots in the '60s at the I think it was the Democratic Convention in Chicago. We had the riots and all that. He was one of the top guys in that whole affair, and then had gone on to become, of course, a professor, a Marxist professor in the uh, Tallahassee uh, FSU, I think. And uh, we got talking. I I asked him. I started asking him about communism, socialism, and uh, you know what he was all about. And he went on to tell me that that uh, he showed me a map that he had of the surrounding states around Florida and in Florida where they had infiltrated uh, the school boards, the the libraries, which was interesting because that's when you become a librarian and you're on the library board, you select what books are gotten rid of at the fire sale and what books you allow into the library for people to have access to information for. And he was showing me where they had infiltrated his little communist cell. And that's, he basically said that's what it was. It was a communist cell. And he was part of it. And they had infiltrated the city council, school boards, all around. He showed me a little map of all that. And, I, and it just hit me. And this was about the time where Gorbachev and Perestroika and Glasnost was happening, which I was highly suspicious of. Uh, you know, the opening up of, uh, you know, Europe, Eastern Europe and all of that. And uh, that started me really looking into it. Uh, he invited me to some of their meetings. I got a strong sense in the spirit that as I was, I was about to go and infiltrate their cell just for my own uh, investigative purposes. And I got a strong sense in the spirit that it was dangerous and that I shouldn't. And when I reneged on the meeting that he invited me to, I, uh, he became very aggressive and uh, a whole new spirit flashed out. That I that was dark, and I realized, yeah, I'm messing with something pretty serious here, and I think I'll just kind of back away. But it wow. led me into studying the whole history of, of communism and the whole revolutionary movement, anarchist movement, going back into the 1800s. And, um, and then, meanwhile, Glasnost, Perestroika was happening. Gorbachev was the savior, and uh, Vladimir Posner was this his sidekick propagandist that was on all the talk shows and. It was a happy face. And, uh, I, and, I, and then Perestroika, uh, let's see, New Lives for Old, Anatoly Golitsyn, uh, was a KGB defector, and pretty much laid out in that book the plan that had been written long before on how to the final takeover of the West and how it was going to be done. 
And uh, so I just buried myself for about a year in, in studying in depth and analyzing what was going on and realized that, uh, that when the wall came down, it wasn't that communism was defeated. It was just the opposite. Communism had now had victory over the West, and it was just a matter of uh, what I've always called the mopping up stage, which is what we're in now. We're, we're actually past the mopping up stage now, and they're, they're getting ready for the, the final clamp down. So I could see, I saw what was happening. I tried to tell people at that time, and of course everyone thought it was crazy. People were, communism was dead. Um, everybody was just like the lemmings that they are, just was following the party line and just, you know, marching right off the cliff. And so all through the 90s, I started doing, uh, in the early 90s, I did a satirical, I, I got into talk radio, mm-hmm. started doing satirical uh, performances as T-Ray, regional director for the New World Order, um, trying to alert people through political satire to what was about to happen, because I could see what was coming. I'd read their strategies, um, I, I knew what was, was about to happen, and my point was to try to alert them through satire that... It wasn't going to be too long before we would the news that we would hear, um, what would we be, what we would be told through the media, what would we would be expected to do and believe and go along with, was was would be so absurd that if you were sane, and in the in the earlier times you, you would laugh it off, you know, and people say, I mean, I used to mock the idea that you wouldn't be able to barbecue. Your your chicken and turkey because of uh, air pollution like that, that that used to be like an absurd notion in the land of the free that someone would come along and tell you there's green days and red days and on the green days you can you can cook your steak out on your grill but you can't on the red days because <laughs> you have know, global warming and I also saw how the environmentalist movement was tied into this whole communist take all that is is just communist uh, attack on private property under the guise of uh, environmentalism, all this is just a giant orchestrated totalitarian regime. Yeah, and what and I was trying to alert people to was, you're going to buy all this stuff. You're going to, in fact, you're going to cheer it and vote for it and think it's normal, and you don't realize this whole thing is, is your enslavement. And just dressed up in quiet tones and calm voices, uh, you'll, you'll all just uh, march right along. That's kind of how it, and they uh, are the genesis of it. And that, that was before I was born again. And then that added a whole other dimension when that happened. Yeah, it became a Bible prophecy. And, you know, I mean, nothing really, nothing new under the sun. I mean, there, you, you had the times of Julius Caesar and the Christian persecution under Nero. And you have the Islamic persecution, right. which is just another wing of the Communist Party. I mean, let's face it, it's all, it's all tied in, right? Like you said originally. And... Um, you know, you go back to the, the letter of Albert Pike, and he said we need three world wars, and then we can really bring in this right. new world Luciferian order for the o- open worship of Lucifer right. um, in public, no longer veiled or hidden or kept secret, but it's like if you don't want to go along with that, you're killed, no ifs, ands, or buts. So there's a sp- that, that was the last piece to the puzzle was recognizing the, the satanic dimension of it, because it's still, I could see that it was happening, but I couldn't figure out, why would anyone want, want to do this? Or why would people want to control others? Why do, why do they want to uh, create a slave totalitarian state where there's loss of freedom and horror and persecution? Who would want to do that? I mean, just I could not comprehend that. Like, why would you do that to your own country? Who are these guys that are running our country and the other countries? that want to take away our rights. Who, why would you ever want to do that? And then I re- yeah. and, uh, when I realized that it's satanic and that actually uh, above the Communist uh, Party and the collectivist thrust of it is the devil. And that's why. Because it's that's evil. why. Because yeah. it's the very top of the whole thing. Because it hurts people. That's, that's the whole idea. Because it, it, because it, it causes yeah, it keeps, trauma. It, 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 it kills people uh, mercilessly with no justice. With no repercussion for the evil doers, um, it's uh, total lawlessness, but under under control. And the reason I look, that's the whole basis for the Zephyr report. What you just said, why the the question, why do they do all this? And the answer is because they're working right. for their boss, 
and they feel it's yeah. just it's just like at Auschwitz when uh, they had Jews who were you know coaxing the other Jews into the uh, gas chambers and ovens. Uh, they got to eat you know filet mignon and have red wine and and have all that while the other their fellow brethren Jews were suffering. But at the end of the day, and this is what I think this is too. At the end of the day, as soon as that batch of Jews was exterminated, then all these guys got shot in the head like five minutes later. <laughs> So, you know, that that's one of the uh, well that that point you just made is um, one of the um, boy how to put this that's one of the side benefits in a dark sort of way a, a cynical way to watching this unfold is that the people that are making this all happen the people the the complicit uh, sellouts the the traitors. They are usually the first to be shot and thrown in a ditch once their work is done, and they don't realize it. No. Um, they're not. They think they're going to be at the party at the end, and that's not how it goes. No. Those are usually the first people taken out because they know too much, and they they're also com- competition. And uh, yeah, there's some justice that is meted out straight away once this thing all settles into place. So a lot of these people that we look at that just seem to be having the time of their life, and they're getting one over, and they're getting all the all the rewards, all the money, all the power, all the fame. Um, yeah, they've got a they've got a dark uh, they've got a dark future. Well, when you talked about this, okay, the Zeph report, two thousand five, two thousand six, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, and uh, you know, and so on. You laid it out about different stages. You said stage one is this kind of indoctrination, uh, recruitment, or whatever. You know, you had these, and then, then you had the mopping up phase where they've accomplished the goal. But you said that uh, from the 60s, all the infiltration and everything that happened with the schools, Marxists in the schools, political correctness, even music, drugs, LSD, all that, was all part of it. Is that, am I accurate on yeah. that? Yeah, but it's all the deeply uh, orchestrated and for decades they've got people in place. That's why you, you'll listen to talk, uh, you know, the top uh, conservative talk radio hosts, some of whom I like. I like Mark Levin and Savage when he goes on a certain tear sometimes. Is, yeah, he's you know, that They're expressing the angst, but right. they're always baffled. They're always thinking, what is, why can't we change anything? Why, why don't people get it? It's because the operatives have been put in place at all the gatekeeping locations and all the positions of power long ago. There's nothing is going to be changed. This thing is on its course. And so that's why I could say with confidence in the 90s, in the 90, 1990, 91, um, exactly how it was going to go because it was already a done deal then. It was already over at that point. And it really was just kind of the, the consolidation phase. And now they're in the, um, one of the things we talked about was, uh, I talked about, uh, uh, was when the Da Vinci Code came out, something, uh, the tripartite layer, where they have orchestrated, they've got this thing so orchestrated in such a way that the news cycles, um, the social media, the propaganda that gets issued for the day is just one tight matrix where it, it's just driving the consciousness of the people. And I, what I said was, it's the end of original thought um, for, for the average person. Now, if you're born of the Spirit, you can still think, you can still see, and you do have freedom of thought. But if the general masses are just uh, being absolutely led along by this tight matrix where everything is orchestrated. What's the subject of the day? What's the crisis of the day? And it's all being let down the chute, you know, to the, yeah. to the execution chambers and to the final, you know, final hurrah. The final, now... What is the tie between this and the Nazis? I mean, I throw that out um, left. I just well, see that there's a lot of collusion there, so I'm... Yeah, it's the same, same, uh, same thing. I mean, it's all satanic uh, collectivism and different wings. I mean, there's, because it's a big world... And there's tribes, and so you've got different factions that are over here. They're all working to the same goal because the whole thing is, and this is what I what I realize with kind of a horror, is the reason it keeps marching along so seemingly perfectly is because it's supernaturally being orchestrated. If this were just left up to men, 
uh, most of these guys are knuckleheads, and they're not very smart no. people. I mean, I mean, you look at a Nancy Pelosi or a Harry Reid, these are like, you know, borderline idiots. Uh, not borderline. I mean, they're yeah. not very bright. And not very stable. That are at the top. And, and emotionally, they seem uh, like they're, they, they need help. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah, they're, they're, they're insane. They're, they're, you know, I mean, the, the inmates are running the asylum, and you think, well, then how are they managing to do such a, 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 an airtight job of getting this thing under lockdown? Yeah, that's and that's a good because question. it's supernaturally. They're just the vessel, supernatural demonic control, which mm -hmm. the, the demonic realm can uh, move around and uh, you know see things coming. They've got the, the benefit of history, of, of existing for thousands of years. I mean, setting things up way, way, way in advance. So that uh, I mean, they're, they they're not limited by mortal death. So they can plan something hundreds, thousand years in advance. Right. And to them, uh, that's not a that's not a long wait. Okay. And so the supernatural control of it is, okay. what is uh, so, ominous. So that's the thing that over the last few years, you know, last decade or so, you've come into the understanding of okay, yeah, you ask the question why, and then you met the Lord, or you gave your life to the Lord, and then after that you were given the answer as to why. Yeah, I saw, saw the whole spiritual dimension to it, and which changed the whole way to approach it. Because you know, until you see that dimension, you are a political activist. You, you still think that there's a chance to go in and change things at the ballot box, or to go out and protest. And I don't, uh, you know... The people that are moved to do that have their role, and they're all part of the tapestry. And, and ultimately, well, God's they tried. For all of that. They tried this last election. Look what happened. That they found out that the Republican Party is the biggest, the biggest flag waver for the the, the revolution. <laughs> yeah, they're the most insidious because they claim to be, you know, the heroes of freedom, and they're they're just the complete utter sellout R rubber raiders. Of all. At least the Democrats, you know what you're getting. Yeah, you know what you're you dealing know, with. Pretty, yeah, you, you know what you're dealing with with the Democrats, and you know, and I see their blogs online, and and uh, they they're, they go something like the Democrats are kind of you know more dumb than the Republicans. I mean, I'm saying this objectively uh, in terms of being able to process complex information. They just they're kind of a one note. Most of the ones I know, anyway, not all of them. Some yes. that are more radically left, like say a guy like Kucinich, he's very smart. But you know, yeah, they think a little bit. You, you know, but I'm just saying the the bulk of them. When you see their posts, it's always people that are conservative that come in that correct the record. Like they'll say, Obama is the best president uh, America has ever had, and list the accomplishments. And it's mind-boggling right. to see that they actually list. The, it's like you think for a minute, well, am I living in the right, same universe as these people? <laughs> the next thing you know, they, the uh, Republican, let's just say conservative, I don't know if they're Republican, but libertarian types, they'll come in right. and sound like Breitbart or whatever, or on Democrat sites, which is where I've seen this recently, where they'll, they'll go into exactly what has happened and be pretty accurate about it, and then... But the Democrats yeah. can only go rah rah sis boom bah, and they keep they don't have any information, they don't have any um, no. sense of history, and then they just claim that Republicans are stupid, and that they don't have any sense. Of it. So they say the same thing about Republicans that I'm saying right now about Democrats, and but then they don't back it up with facts. They don't cite or if they yeah, do, they have no facts. They're emotional. Right, they're emotional. Democrats are emotional and subjective. Everything is just the subjective. Right. It's their feelings and the, their facts that don't really matter. Right. And at least the, the conservative wing has got the facts out there. But what I realized when I got born again was that as far as how to cope with this on an individual level, like what do you do now that you see it? What? Wow. Because it's it's like watching a train wreck that you've been told, okay, this train's going to wreck up here at this time, this date. Or there's going to be a massacre, and there's what do you do? You're get, all you know is that it's going to happen, and there's really nothing you can do to change it from yeah. your individual standpoint. So, how do you personally, individually cope with that without succumbing? Because it could be very demoralizing when you're caught up 
on the world level of it. I mean, I, you know, you see these these people that can see what's going on. I feel I feel sorry for them. The 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 patriot the patriots and uh, people that do have an actual sense of history and that haven't been completely utterly brainwashed by the propaganda. They're beside themselves because they can see what's happening. They're shouting out. They're trying to. They're they're going out. They're putting their energy and blood and sweat and tears into trying to to alter the course, and the course just keeps on going. And so, That's if you don't be, have yeah. the Lord, you're gonna you it's it'll make you suicidal. It'll make you crazy. Well, a lot of those patriots too, so, though. A lot of them do have the Lord, and they're just they'll they'll say, yeah, this is prophesied. But now it becomes. How do we survive as best we can, you know, knowing it's going to come? Right, and then the, and then those ones that claim to have the Lord, then there's that whole section that uh, that nominally I would say believe, um, but there's a whole other level beyond that where you you actually are sold out. You mm -hmm. die to yourself, and the Lord is the Lord of your reasoning. He's the Lord of your uh, emotions, of how you're going to deal with it. And a lot of people don't go that, uh, the claim to see the light, don't really go that next step. They're still, yeah, they're still, still the operating from the worldly level. They're yeah, materialism. The they're still trying to fight it from the flesh. Right, it's external. In other words, the, the, the biggest deception the church has done, or the quote church, unquote, not, not church really, but organized religion with Jesus has done, is what they've done is they've externalized what is meant to be internal. And by doing that, people don't develop faith, and they, they, they become part of a culture rather than with God. Right. And that externalization avoids the entire spiritual dimension, which is internal, that can lead right. to, to breakthroughs. And, and, and uh, I've just noticed that when you talk to people, they'll have a scripture quote, they say the Bible says this, and and I'm and I say, well, why can't you just look at that as a multi-layered kind of thing? And they don't know what you're talking. They can't do it. Like for example, the third temple needs to be built before you know. And then Jesus is coming in on a horse, and he's going to have his flag and all these. And it's like, no, that's that that style of writing is mythology. That's meant to get you deep into the spiritual dimension of what all that means. But they never go there. They teach it as an external reality. Um, Right. And it's some of it's very silly, you know. It's like it's almost like a comic bookish, not not to put down comic books, but it, yeah. it if it's external without the yeah. internal, then it becomes a comic book. It becomes because um, I'm I'm one that thinks that myth mythology is really important, and it tells us things that we can't tell ourselves that that we couldn't get to if it was on a high level of say physics or cosmology or something. That, that can be handled in a myth. And then you have to, it's up to us as we, we mature to use our brains and break it down, you know, and use our spirit and kind of break it down as to what it means. And so it becomes Rima, so it feeds us that God is there, God is eternal, we're eternal with him. This world isn't the world. It's the world is with him and reality is with him. And this is something he's put us through for whatever reason he has. And that's good enough for me. You know what I mean? And that kind of gives me hope when I put it in, but if I'm materialistic t too much, I'll never look at it that way. I'll just dread all these awful things happening. Right. So I don't know. Okay, I got other questions. Um, okay, now. Well, I just real quick. Go ahead. I was just going to say uh, one of the other things uh, I remember talking about was uh, total surveillance and what we're going into now with the total surveillance state where there's no privacy. Uh, whatsoever, yeah. Um, and I, I remember doing a show and saying the the key to surviving that is to live blamelessly. And by that, now we can't do that. We're, we're, we continue to sin, um, but in the, on the process, once you're saved and you you hit on the road to sanctification, the Spirit slowly but surely starts uh, changing you. You do wow. start onto the road to the ultimate perfection, and you do. You're not what you want to be. You're not where you know you need to be, but you're not what you used to be. Yeah, amen. You, you actually do start making actual spiritual character progress, and you leave behind things that used to dog you and hold you down and uh, addictions, all kinds of things. Those start dropping away. The Spirit handles that in time. But as far as living blamelessly, what I, very practically what I meant by that was uh, assume that everything you're writing, saying, 
uh, doing is being recorded, and uh, because it is, and in the not too distant future, all of that is going to be at instant access to the gendarmes, to the to the you know, where's your papers, guys? You know, show us your papers. They're going to be able to call this up. You know, something you wrote, something you said at any point in time, and so. Rather than getting paranoid about that, uh, which a lot of people do, and tr- and try to try to block out uh, the possibility of that happening fully, well, they're not going to be able to stop that. They've got it under lockdown, and they're 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 going to. It's only going to increase. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for a Christian, though, for a believer, see, that's not a big problem to me because I know God is recording everything. Yeah, I already yeah. know that I'm being watched. I know that my thoughts aren't secret. I'm not hiding anything already, so I'm not that uncomfortable. I'd only be uncomfortable if I'm a hypocrite, and if I'm living in such a way that I'm saying one thing but secretly doing something else, yeah. then I've got a problem. But you've got a problem with God, but I'm just saying uh, try to assume that just just come to the reality that, yeah, everything is being watched, recorded, monitored all of the time, and so don't do stupid things. Don't say stupid things. Don't get yourself into unnecessary trouble because you have an emotional outburst and, and say something that, because uh, I'm, I'm talking about what's coming in the future where right now we've said, these are the golden days. These are the good old days, what we've got now compared to the lockdown, the psychotronic, psychological lockdown that is coming. And it's, I mean, it's bad now where people don't dare say what they think uh, honestly and everyone's learning how to be politically correct. That You know, they've got us all policing ourselves. But it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse where you're in your home with your family, and if you say something against the Fuhrer, you know, your your TV's recording it, your phone's recording it, and uh, and if if you're someone that they deem they want to mess with, you're done. It's Kafka. I'm just saying, yes. Uh, They take you off. Blamelessly, but actually, live like a believer should live so that you're glorifying God. All of the time, even in your private moments, in your secret time, when you're alone, don't be doing things that you would be embarrassed to have Jesus watching or listening, because he is. And that, just on a practical level, just to be working towards that is one way to get through the the total lockdown that we're going into. Or if you are doing things that are embarrassing, fess up to the Lord, you know, admit it, and say, help me, please. Yeah, for sure. You know, admit it. Yeah, because you're going to do it anyway. We're, we're all going to, we all slip up, and uh, and all we need to care about is what he what he thinks. Um, but it just, that's, anyway, sorry. That's I don't the, know of another, I, I agree. I don't know of another way to go. I got to, everything's got to go through the lens of him, and at, at the end, you know, the conversation has to continue with him as to what I think about this or how I'm going to react to that or who I might associate with or not or how things go. I, I try not to think about it too much and analyze it in my own head, but I just kind of like, I just want to be in the flow of the Lord. I just want to be an extension of his will, not my own, because, you know, you learn, you know, it's about him, not us, because, I, I mean, an existential question would right. be, you know, why am I here? You know, this is not the kind of planet I would come to. That I'm not the kind of person that belongs here. You know, that's an existential <laughs> question, and then, then the Lord says, right. you're here because I put you here, Period. Okay, thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then that's the end of the dis- discussion. And with good faith, you go, look, all good things come from you, Father. All good things, you know. And um, and and so, therefore, I'm going to trust that, even though I don't like it, and I don't like seeing this kind of lawless craziness, you know, whatever going on. I'm going to trust you because. He has a good purpose. He has a, not only a good purpose, but a loving purpose for, for putting us through this and having this go the way it is. And yeah. that, you, you'll see people's lack of faith when they, they are uh, doubting. They think something's wrong. They think something's gone wrong with the way things are, and we need to get back to something. You know, and in a superficial way, yeah, that's true. But once you recognize and accept and have full faith in the sovereignty of God, that he's doing exactly what he wants, and not only is he doing it, it's perfect, it's holy, it's loving. And so, yeah, you can, we can see how that is right now. I, I actually can see it sometimes. He shows it, and I see it, and I'm fine with what he's doing. As tough as it is, 
but to actually have faith in him that he's got it under control. And I'm, ta- I'm saying, yep. going forward, this is a very practical way to cope with what's coming and to realize in everything we do in these, in these coming years is to glorify him and not, not try to survive, not try to get ourselves into some position. I mean, that happens incidentally, then he'll take care of that the way he wants to. But ultimately, whatever we're doing in any situation, be thinking, am I glorifying God in this? Am I glorifying God in what I'm saying and how I'm acting right now in this situation? And uh, that's the key to getting through, because it's going to get... It's going to get worse. It's, it's, this is nothing. But I mean, do you think? It is. Do you think these people like the state of the world right now? Are they getting off on this, or what do you think? Are they they happy yes. that they're making yeah. progress? They like causing human suffering. Yeah, there's, yes. There's a fever when you when you're in the grips of the devil, uh, whatever degree, and people are at varying degrees um, to the demonic and uh, open themselves up to demonic control. The, the demons, they love the darkness, and they love blasphemy. They relish it. They get a kick out of it. It's a high. It's a drug. So the people that are just demonically completely possessed or, or even just uh, influenced, uh, they enjoy chaos. They enjoy mm-hmm. seeing suffering. They're, they're, they're sadists. And uh, the, to them, this is great because they're, they're delusional. They're insane, so they think out of chaos. They're gonna, you know, come up with something good after they destroy, absolutely destroy everything decent and traditional and classic. Uh, they've actually got this insane uh, delusion. That they're gonna reform their utopia. Yeah, right. To the finally tend to the golden age. They don't even have any plans. So they're enjoying the. Go ahead. Well, they think they actually believe that this. That's what <clears throat> hit me one time. Mm-hmm. When I was trying to comprehend evil, and, and uh, it was during the when the Iraq War was getting started, uh, this this recent one after the Twin Towers, and I was I was pondering the the men that were, uh, it was on the eve of going after Saddam, and I was just I was dreading it. I, I was having an argument with a friend, and he's all oh, we'll be in and out of there in a month, and I was saying no, this is going to be horrible. This is going to lead to an extended stay, hundreds of thousands of lives. Dead, suffering, maimed, it's, it's terrible. It's just a big, evil CF. And, uh, uh-huh. and I remember thinking, trying to comprehend the, 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 the men that are, are taking us there. How can, how can they do this? Because they've got to know what's about to happen, what they're about to unleash. And then I real, it hit me, and I, it was like it was a word from God. He showed it to me. That they actually think they're doing a good thing. Most of these guys that are doing this stuff, even even though they know they're on the dark side or that they're co-opting, in their mind they, they believe they're utilizing the dark side. That you got it's a duality. You've got to have a little dark with the light. You know they've got all these ways to justify it, but they actually believe that it's for good. That they actually think they're doing a good thing, just like uh, you know Hitler. Uh, you know, purifying the race, that's a good thing. We want to, you know, we've got, we're, we're cooperating with evolution, and um, that's a good thing. We want to create a super race, and in the future, the future generations will benefit from this. And so, yeah, if we have to crack a few heads on the way up and a little bit of torture and suffering, what's the big deal? In the long run, it's for the good. And they, they actually convince themselves that they're on the right side. And that's what, once you get that, it's easier to, to see how they can continue doing what they're doing. Because most of them actually believe they're doing a good thing. They think they're doing the God's work. Yeah, and well, what about the chemtrails? What are, what are well, those, in your opinion? I mean, how does that play into this whole thing? They, well, I think I, I, I've, I've looked on the Internet. Uh, when they first started happening, I, I believe, I, I'm, I'm probably wrong, but I, let's say I was one of the first to say that uh, I, I believe nanotechnology was in involved with it mm-hmm. pretty common uh, analysis and uh, theory yeah. is that uh, nanotechnology is involved with the particles because they are on their march to transhumanism and so they are getting these nanoparticles I believe into our systems into our brains into our bloodstreams into our bodies 
so that when they do the final hookup, when they do the final big clamp down or what they think is going to be, you know, we're, we're all transhumanists. We're all, we've taken the next evolutionary step. And so I believe that's, that's a big part of what they're doing. And, and usually they have multiple things they're doing at one time. So that's why people get confused when they're studying it because they'll see one side of it. It's, it's like a faceted uh, diamond or a, fa- a faceted thing where they'll see one side and they go, oh, what they're doing is they're controlling the weather. Yeah, they're doing that too. They're, they're doing maybe 10 things at the same time through one, uh, um, one system, one uh, delivery system. And and they 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 think they're so smart and and uh, and they do have any some people you know some of these scientists and uh, elitists do have an evil genius or a demonically inspired evil genius just like the the demons that come through people that can speak you know twenty languages ancient languages that have all kinds of knowledge about stuff that uh, they do get a certain degree of intelligence from the, the demonic uh, experience vast experience so. They do a delivery system, or they do one of the programs. It's not just one thing they're doing. They're they're, they're accomplishing ten, fifteen different things, and they've got people they've got people compartmentalized in the way they do it. So one, if you get a whistleblower, he might come out and say, "Yeah, what they're doing actually is they're they're, they're putting aluminum in because they want to reflect out so that they and and set up a, a metallic uh, substrate across the sky because of hot and radar, you know, and that's true." So one group sees that part of it, they're involved with, but there's 10 other divisions that are doing completely different stuff that's like, you know, occultic uh, stuff that where they're, they're trying to infuse nanoparticles that work on a part of the brain that is the, the, the spiritual, uh, electrochemical part of the brain that uh, communicates with spirit. They've got a nanobot in there that is able to open up a pathway for demonic download at the push of a button, stuff like that. I actually believe is what they think they're okay. doing and attempting to do. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about rec- recently about, um, you know, altering human DNA. A lot of talk about that that's really what the third yep. temple is. The third the erection of the third temple is the temple within, you know, the third strand of DNA, that they're able to, to put it in us somehow and maybe mm-hmm. that's the mark of the beast you know if you break that out in that way but that yeah. that would render yeah. you un, un, non-human at that point but you would be kind of like under the control of what we might call the aliens or whatever but all this seems to play into this you know they're 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 destroying the plant genome the human genome by and and part of it's by feeding us gmo foods let's say and and then and then spraying stuff in the air and then chemicals in the water and so forth, kind of as a, I guess this is all a scientific thing to ch- change us as human into something else. The, what, what? To create really a matrix that is so multidimensional and on hitting you from so many levels from their point of view that there, there's no more chance of you having free will or yeah, from right their right. satanic point of view from you ever hearing from God again. Because you won't be able to. You'll be a zombie that's operating at the push of their buttons. Yeah, that's, that's it. Well, that I, to the good old days. I've seen some things where people have done the research and that this DNA change of this of this third strand, which would be a nano strand, it would be a machine that kind of fulfills the Daniel prophecy, you know, iron mixed with clay, and that would actually do it. Mm-hmm. And then what that would do, though, is it would make people into robot, like you said, zombies, that would be have no free will whatsoever yep. anymore. They would just be at the behest, complete under the control completely of this evil, high level, technological, and, and almost you know, run by non human intelligences, but intelligences nonetheless less uh, that would um, exert a total control, say from from uh, an off world kind of situation. I mean, what are your thoughts about these yeah. non-human intelligences that seem to be guiding all this? Who are they? In your view? Uh, I, I believe they're the... I mean, about pretty traditional on that view of them being uh, fallen angels in, that are able to move interdimensionally and have raw technology and... Uh, uh, that's as far as I can see that it could be if I'm, if I'm, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm very traditional 
biblically in a lot of ways where I don't like to go too far out of, well, not at all. I don't want to go outside of the Word of God in any sense. So if I can't find it in there or a clue to it, then I don't, then it's a question mark for me. So I, I, I've given what it, I read, yeah, yeah. I just assume it's demonic. I've given it a lot of thought from back in Genesis and then as it was before, it will be again. The story of Noah. Yep. And yep. the story of Daniel's prophecy, Iron Mix with Clay. And then you get the idea after all that that, you know, and then the intertwining of the serpent and the and the human uh, as the fall of man, that you, you know, hit the serpent in the head and the serpent will bruise the heel. In other words, it shows me like an intertwining, almost like a DNA fall, like something engineered so that we fell. And then then this thing seems to be what they want to do is just create a slave race, just kind of like put, put the human part out completely, put the plant out completely, the animals. So what I've concluded, and I want your thoughts on this, is, is that Satan really, you know, the, the myth, and it's, I believe this is mythology that needs to be looked into very carefully, but the war of the angels, okay, a third of the angels rebel, you know, because God made human. That's the way the myth goes. God made human, the angels didn't like it, and then, you know, Lucifer took a third of the angels and rebelled. So the idea would be then to take what God created and just pervert it all as part of the war. Exactly. And, okay. Yes, and, uh, and they actually believe that they have a chance to, to, uh, to um, annex or demarcate a section of creation for themselves. They believe they're going to be able to get the thing so perverse and so under their control that they're going to be able to go back to God and say, look, this part's ours. You know, go have your, you have the rest of what you have, but just leave us this little part. We'll just run this part. We've already got control of it. Look how good we've done. You know, there's nobody left. Uh, we've got the whole thing under lockdown. Just leave us alone and that, that they're actually deluded to that degree where they think they're going to get away with that, right. and so that yeah, you're exactly. I believe you're exactly right as far as how they're they're what they're doing now to get uh, through technology and through the DNA. That's why I say like you know people think things are bad now, um, and they are. But these are the good old days. I mean, you could still go off uh, to a cabin and live in the hills for a while and have some relative uh, peace. I mean, you're still pretty much left alone comparatively to what's coming in your day-to-day -day life for what they have in plan where, yeah, there's nobody left. There's no more free thought. There's no more free spirits left. And that's their goal. It's just a nightmare. Yeah, so nightmare that would be future. a destruction. I believe they're going to get real close to it. A destruction of the human will via corruption of the DNA, which it would be a second attempt at that because it seems like the DNA was already corrupted. That's what the garden story is about. I think. I mean, that's right. my opinion based on, you know, I've looked at it for a yeah. lot of years, too, and yeah. I just, I don't, you know, I see it as, again, like a, a mythological way of putting it, like telling a story, you know, where God's trying to find out what happened, and he's following uh, Adam around saying, where are you, and you know, how did you know you were naked? I think this is all stuff that needs to be analyzed, you know, from, uh, you could even do that from a scientific standpoint, and, and, and think, well, what does that mean in terms of uh, DNA, what does that mean in terms of what a human is compared to what he was before? You know, those kind of things. Okay, so these Luciferians, uh, I, mean, the, I think the darkest thing we found out about, and this is all over the Internet, back when I started talking, of course, it, none of it was on the Internet. <laughs> it's really weird. But, uh, pedophile? Well, the pedophile conspiracy that also kills children um, and yeah. human trafficking and all that. It's, but it just seems like now... Hollywood's been admitted to be a pedophile network posing as an entertainment business. America's a pedophile network posing as a country. And all this stuff is, you know, the stories are out there and they're not even being refuted anymore. I mean, what's, why is no one defending that? Or is that all going to come out and then anyone who believes it will be put on a list to be exterminated? I mean, what, what is that? Well, it's interesting. I mean, where because God always has the last laugh, and a lot of these these people think they're invincible, and a lot of them that uh, have been perpetrating this this whole situation, like like we're just saying, are some of the first ones to be thrown to the walls, and that's what I think is happening now because they can't keep a lid on it 
uh, always. They are, they are fallible. They aren't Olympians. They aren't demigods, as right. you know they're, they're delusional and think they are. Yeah. They actually screw up. They they're most of them are basket cases emotionally. Their their lives are a disaster personally. And so, uh, you know, they think they've covered their tracks, and, and God will, uh, it's, it's interesting, no matter how bad it gets, God always keeps his remnant, and he always keeps a remnant of light going right through the whole thing, so that if you have the eyes to see it, it's there for you to see. Yeah, they, they, they expect to have the whole thing in darkness and, uh, you know, under lock and key, but they're not going to. There's always going to be a remnant right through to the end. There's always going to be, uh, if you want to see it, if you uh, actually care about truth and want to look at things and see them for what they are instead of staying in the, in the delusion, it's going to be there for you to see. And so I, I see the, the, an act of God where he just says, you know what, guys, I'm going to pull up the covers here for a little bit and just because you're not, you're not getting away with what you think you're getting away with. And they'll, they'll get it under wraps and a few people will be thrown to the wolves and they'll march on. But uh, to me, this is a move of God that lets the, those that have the eyes to see, mm -hmm. he, he gives us a bone too as we're going along, you know? Yeah, like the, in the news, we have this guy Epstein with this, this pedophile island where there's dungeons of, of you know, right. sex slaves and Bill Clinton and you've got now Stephen Hawking and, you know, Hillary and, uh, you know, various celebrities and political figures. I guess celebrities and pol political figures are all in the same boat nowadays. So they've all been to the island. And yep. they've been having orgies at the island. They go there. I don't know of any other reason to go to the island except to have an orgy. Um, yeah. And then my question to you is, I'm going to ask you a really difficult question. I just want your thoughts. You may not have even researched this, but I want your impression do you think they were killing children on the island? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 And in fact, I have uh, researched a little bit uh, tangentially. I was uh, I came across some stuff. Wow. It's not something I uh, look into because we talked about this years ago and said this was going on, so I already knew it was happening. Yeah. And we talked about, you know, their snuff films and all the whole underground network of that. that because that's the ultimate in evil. And, of course, that's, sure. that's once you're corrupted, you need a bigger pop. You need to get a, a bigger thrill. And so, of course, that's where it's going to go. Murder innocent children after you've, you know, in the act of while you're sexually abusing them. Make a film of it and show it to your health watch buddy. Hey, do you think and they... they in Britain... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I just want... Yeah. Well, I'm well, sorry to interrupt. Say, in Britain, a lot, a lot of this... In Britain, uh, a lot of this has come out where these, some, I can't remember their names, but some of these prime ministers not too long ago have lawsuits lodged against them, and there's quite a bit of evidence where they take these uh, yeah. kids out on, they'd have these yachts, and they'd have these kid parties out there, and uh, a lot of these witnesses said they saw the kids, they knew some of the children that were killed on these boats, because once they use them, they got to get rid of them. They can't keep them around to talk, so... Yeah, I have no doubt that's what's going on, and there's a plenty of evidence that that has gone on. Yeah, and, uh, you know, then, you know, of course, this whole scandal started with Prince Andrew, and then, you know, then grew to be this, this billionaire Epstein who started off as a math teacher and then became a billionaire, and friends to all these celebrities, you know, anybody famous you can imagine, I think, has been to that island. So they're probably all quaking in their book boots. And here's what I, what I think they're quaking about. Do you think they're quaking like this? Well, I'll tell you what. We'll admit to the to the sex thing and put doubt on whether or not they were there of their own free will or not. And then uh, that way we'll cover up all the mur murders. <laughs> then, yeah, I, I because, think you're right. I think that's as far as it'll go. Because people aren't going to believe. They'll, they'll let enough out. People would never believe something like, a celebrity, I don't need to give no. press to any one of them, but would preside over the killing of any children for ritual power uh, in their satanic right. um, fervor. And, you know, the, the, right. I think there's more and more time. I mean, it's not, look, back in the day, we talked about stuff like this, and it was just not out there. Some survivors came forward yep. and talked about it, like we had Kathy O'Brien, and that was debunked, kind of. We had Bryce Taylor come forward with her testimony, which was so unbelievable. It was just a kind of a list of facts. I mean, I read the book. You couldn't get the book. You had to buy a, a copied copy for $100. Um, 
But I read it, and mm -hmm. and as I was reading, I'm going, this this girl's not lying. She's just basically listing, kind of like almost not even like a memoir, but trying to, you know, almost like list for the court like an affidavit or something, what happened, and and just casually mentioned, you know, this celebrity or that, you know, this icon celebrity or that icon celebrity involved in, and she mentioned things about human sacrifice and uh, porn films and all kinds of criminality that, uh, that, that these people were involved in and then that nothing had ever happened. And then when we read the book and talked about it in 2003 or four, whenever it was, nothing ever happened regarding her in the book. She just had handlers assigned to her and it all died down. She repented for writing the book and said, I'm just going to forgive everybody. And that I was just, maybe I was mistaken. You know, she almost doubted herself, not quite, but she kind of went back into her real life and away from that sort of thing because there was no reaction by the world of her allegations. None. Yeah. I mean, not one investigation, except for maybe Ted Gunderson, but he'd already been discredited for the McMartin thing. So, yeah, yeah. Well, most people have just don't have. I think most people don't have the experience of that kind of evil. But what I would say is, I believe virtually everyone that is capable of that, and it's a slippery slope. And uh, once you get into evil, and you just keep going that course, yeah. you're always up in the ante. And uh, it, I think any of these people that would just think that's outrageous, they couldn't believe anyone could do that, would themselves be doing it if they were in the right place at the right time, uh, the money, yeah. the power, that all that aphrodisiac, yeah, and, uh, maybe so. the demonic influence, everybody's capable of that. The, the depravity of the fallen human is, uh, is, is as bad as you can imagine, and uh, they're doing it. For sure. I mean, I have no doubt that that's exactly what's going on in it. And I think you're right. It, it, it's going to be exposed so far because they can't keep the lid. On. They're they're fallible. As much as they'd like to, they can't keep the lid on it completely. So they're gonna they're gonna have their little. Uh, they let out air. You know, a little bit of compression, decompression, yeah, yeah. little a little bit out, and then just keep moving on. Yeah. See, I I look at that, and keep I look at it. the Epstein thing, and I'm looking at the aisle pictures of the island, and pictures of Bill Clinton and, and Prince Andrew and and some other people that you would think would be more benign, but they were there too. And, uh, I, I you know, and then there's pictures with Clinton with these prostitutes that were there as for Epstein's people or whatever, and he seems to be partying. And I don't know, you know, and then, of course, I, I have my own thoughts about it from the way Hollywood is run and everything that it's always been... Um, there's always been a nod, wink, hush, hush thing about children. And a lot of these children, yep. child actors that you see that act like they're 30 years old when they're like, you know, 12 or seven, yeah. you know, that's, yeah. that's, they don't become that way over, over on their own. That That's conditioning. Right. That if, if you sexualize yeah. a child and have her used as a prostitute and whatnot in exchange for movie roles or whatever, she's going to start acting like a 30 year old. When you know, and and so it brings into mind all of it, and 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 then all of Washington and all the halls of power around the world, and and the preying upon the children. The one thing you should, in other words, it's the one thing you should never, ever, ever, ever do. Seems to be the thing that, at least around the edges, is coming up a little bit more and more in the news. I mean, not completely, you know, but we yeah. have pedof you know, a headline like pedophile ring hooked to all these celebrities, and then the news just goes on to the next thing without blinking an eye. <laughs> I mean, I, let's face it, the Epstein thing is it's going to disappear. It's going to disappear. In, in other words, there's not going to be any big trial about yeah. all this. No. And they're eventually going to get the, uh, I believe, the uh, Internet and information under control enough Right now, it's still too much of a wild west where this stuff can slip out, but they're eventually going to get everything uh, under lockdown. Well, we won't hear these types of things anymore. We're, we're kind of in a free free information heyday for a bit. Uh, okay, so you... They'll get it locked down. They'll get it under control. All right, another prediction from you. That is, there will be a lockdown of the information. Uh, that's what it looks like to me, too. 
And so this will be under control in the future. Meanwhile, when this stuff comes up, nobody prosecutes anyone. Yeah, they just go on to the next news right. item. It's the Patriots' fault. It's the uh, libertarian. It's it's conservatives. It's Christians. They're the responsible for everything, and all these other perversions and lawlessness and and insanity. It just it's it's okay because they're cool people. Or what? I don't even know how it works like yeah. that. It's I mean, back in years ago, it'd be like if there's any allegation like that it would go on for months with investigations and testimony and everything else. Eventually, we get covered up. You know, and then you, you are, wear a tinfoil hat. Well, how do you see the economy going in the future? Near future, I should say. Um, I'm sticking to what uh, what I've always said and thought because so far it's it's gone that way, and um, and I I do I do believe um, Russia has a lot more involvement with what's going on than they're being made to appear to have. And uh, one of the, on their strategic game plan, the plan was eventually to crash the American economy, just devastate it. And that is when they intended to invade. And I still don't doubt that some, some type of version of that is going to happen. I mean, I, I do think, I think we'll have Chinese and Russian troops mm -hmm. in the country uh, after the crash. So... Um, I think this whole thing with BRICS and the, the setting up of the alternative uh, petrodollar um, is all part of their orchestrating this, combined with a, a, probably a hacking, you know, massive hacking attack on the banks and all of that. It's going to be orchestrated. I think it's going to be sudden. It's going to be something where one day you wake up, it's kind of like 9-11, and it's just happened, and it's ne we're never going back to the way it was. And it, um, I'm not... I don't know how close it is. I mean, I can see all the pieces being put in place, and to me it's just a matter of time. And it feels like it's getting real close. Um, I know there, there's a lot of buzz about 2015, and it would make sense to me uh, in the last uh, mm -hmm. years of uh, Obama that some pretty radical stuff's going to go down. Okay, so is it Obama? Here, here's the million dollar question: Is it Obama alone, or is it all? He's a puppet being controlled by a, a whole group of uh, a consortium of uh, really evil individuals. I mean, how do yeah. you how, how, yeah. that? Okay, that one. That's the one. Yeah, he's a puppet. He's a he's a crackhead. I mean, he's a uh, just a metro narcissist. Uh, crackhead that's very useful and uh, is basically just uh, in place to, because so no one can criticize him or do anything to stop it. He was put in right at the right time, the right guy, the right color, everything, so that they can uh, sort of cinch this thing up right at the end. And so, uh, do, do you? Do yeah. you? I, I'm just getting all these predictions. I, I mean, I understand if you, you haven't thought of them, but uh, do you see a race war in the United States? Uh, yeah, I do think that part of this collapse is uh, in uh, civil war. Uh, part of their plan is to induce, and, and you can, I believe you can see it now, what they're what they're doing with um, with all the racial propaganda is to is to create a, a civil war type of environment, so that uh, that create that's part of creating the pretext for bringing in outside forces to uh, settle things down and to. Uh, calm the situation and divide up the country to, to, to neutralize the power of what's left, what shreds are left of the power of the states, the individual states. A few of the states are, uh, they know what's some, there's people that know what's going on that are still in some positions of power that are, are seriously considering secession and things like that, where mm -hmm. they can try to carve out a little, a little, um, um, the doubt. But, um, I think that, the the civil, that they, they want a civil war, and that's actually was part of the communist strategy was to uh, instigate civil war using racial strife within the country. I mean, that, that, mm -hmm. that's been on the books for quite a while. And so you look at what's going on right now, and it's like, yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. And then now it's a, almost a time of lawlessness where if anybody, if somebody who's black um, hits someone that's white or whatever, there's no real repercussion, 
So I saw a thing today about that where you could train to fight, learn how to fight because you can punch a cop for free, meaning nothing will happen to you if you punch out a cop. <laughs> so I, right. you know, and then people yeah. fall for that. That's not, part of not in, I'm, you know, you know, intelligent people that are white or black or whatever color, we're not into skin color. It's you've got to, to fall for right. that. You've got to have sort of a lack of ability to really reason, don't you? I mean, to, to, to get caught up in a race yeah. war, you know, not realize yeah. you're being used. Yeah. You know, Cause people don't, I yeah. mean, I don't know anyone who's, who hates rate, rate people of their skin color. I, I just don't know anyone like that. It's just <laughs> not, not that, I mean, maybe no, there's a couple in my I'm life, looking. but I'm not, but I'm not that aware of it. It's, it's just not something that seems so prevalent, but I, I guess, there's this old thing of white privilege or – look, I don't – I'll admit I really don't understand the whole th – There, I'm sure there's some reason. Well, they're getting it up. Okay. But there's some reason like – They're getting it up for sure. Past resentment. I mean like Django Unchained. You know, let's get – you know, even though it was a very entertaining movie, it had a, a very almost pre-race pre war kind of connotation to it. And there were no consequences where you had Don Johnson playing this awful racist and Leonardo DiCaprio, and they were just playing almost like caricatures of what they thought racists were. And then this Jamie Foxx yeah. guy running around shooting them all, and the, and the crowds are cheering, yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, okay, you know, and then the next thing you know, the next, the, the next year or so after that comes out, because I think movies are kind of prophetic in a way, we have all this um, nasty stuff going on, you know, just just cops yeah. dead and, you know, uh, Michael Savage yelling and screaming that de Blasio killed the cops himself and the country's gone. And, you know, people are essentially saying now it's all over. It's not all over, though, according to what you're saying. No, the, a, a, big, a big part of this, uh, I'd say, PSYOP is... The federalizing of the police, that's a, that's a big uh, part of the plan, too. It's, uh, they can't have the local control of police that um, is traditionally an American concept. Mm -hmm. And uh, that they've got to get them federalized. So all of this is being used as an excuse to start uh, getting federal regulations on how police behave, what they can do, what they can't do. And one of the things that the communists always did when they first... Uh, started putting in their regime once they'd taken over a country and started installing themselves. And one of the signs that you can tell when they're in charge of the, of the system is uh, criminality, like real criminality, is just glossed over. It's, a, it's just kind of, uh, no big deal. You know, murders can go on, things like this. Uh, the, the high, what we would consider just typical bad, violent crimes, terrible crimes, they're, they receive light punishment and are almost rewarded, but then thought crimes are punished with great severity. And those things become flipped. Uh, like in Cuba. That's the hallmark Cuba. of a... Yeah. Hallmark of a communist takeover. The criminals run free, and then the decent kind of law-abiding people are punished. You know, you get 10 years because you, you, you said something to somebody that was politically incorrect and you're in prison for 10 years and tortured. Whereas a guy that murders his family or, you know, slaughters some white couple in the street, he gets, uh, you know, eight months or a year or something. Uh, that, that's a hallmark of... Uh, okay, so we have the... We, and it, it's we, demoralized. We've got that brewing right now, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, yep. and yep. Uh, how many people are going to survive this uh, successful... Clamp down. I'm sorry, I ask you these questions. I so I used to do it to you. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I've wondered that. You know, I mean, uh, I honestly think it's eventually. I mean, I I don't think we're as close as it feels like we are, and we've been kind of a, a thinking it is. And I, I remember starting to see that pretty early on, like uh, people were expecting the return of Jesus. You know, I mean, it's like, oh, he's got to come now. And I remember saying, and wow. thinking, no, you did. We're we're in this for a while. We're just going to drag on. It's going to get a lot worse. I, you know, we wish it would wish it end because it's it's horrible. It's horrific to watch this destruction going on. I mean, this was a this country was a, a 
decent country as far as worldly fallen countries go. It had some really excellent ideas that came out of the Reformation. It did. It did. And, and I, I remember... To see that destroyed. I remember yeah. I used to run the dogs on the beach in California. Just They would run and play with the other dogs on any beach. I mean, I'm just using that as that. But then the, the, the whole environmental thing came in. And you couldn't have the dogs on the beach. Yeah. Then you couldn't have them on the boardwalk on a leash. Then you couldn't have them in the parking lot. And then, you know, you could have smoking, yeah. you know, but then you couldn't have it on the boardwalk. Then you couldn't have it in the parking lot of the beach. I mean, I'm kind of beach-oriented from my youth, so a lot of stuff comes yeah. it stems from the beach. And, and For what, us, it was the mountains. Yeah. We, we used to run around the mountains in high school, and, uh, you know, party up there and uh, cut, be driving home at four in the morning, drive right past the cop with like a pickup truck full of, part, you know, Kager people that had just been up in the mountains yeah. partying all night. And the cops would just drive by you. Yeah, I mean, it, we actually had a free country. Uh, people don't realize. They, they like to say, oh, it was never like that. Well, it was because I remember it. I remember not being hassled at two in the morning or seeing a cop, you know, fall, expecting him to follow me and try to pull me over under some pretext. Uh, you know, when I was a teenager, we used to ride around at night, sure. run around, run around the neighborhoods, and yeah. be loud and free, and nobody cared really. I mean, it wasn't, I, it wasn't a problem. I remember people weren't just ready to turn you in. I remember me back to one night in on Sunset Boulevard in Pacific Palisades, partying out there, and um, and then these people went by in a kind of a I don't know, like a station wagon or some kind of thing, you know, with that could hold more, like maybe a van. Uh, driving by, you know, yelling and screaming and doing whatever they're doing. And guy moons the people on the side, it like moons these people waiting outside a theater uh, by sticking his butt cheeks up against the yeah. window and they're all screaming, ah, like that. And nothing happens, is the point. Right. And, well, I remember uh, that all the time. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. And it was, it was just, you know, there was just something innocent about those times, I guess. But uh, even then, though, I remember since this is post sixties, you know, this is like sixty nine, seventy, seventy one when I'm in that in that area. They um were recruiting Satanists back then. And you could see when people got initiated into it how their personalities would change overnight. They suddenly became conformist. Their hair got cut, they were wearing the right clothes, yeah. they got into the right school. They on the surface they would seem like prim and proper good people. They straightened up their act. They weren't partying like that. They weren't, you know, uh, they weren't. Um, but what happened wasn't them straightening up at all. They got inducted, and they then put on the appearance of being so conservative, prim and proper. But that's not at all what they were. I remember that yeah. that kind of thing. That frightened me. Yeah. Because I. Along yeah, with that yeah. change, their personality changed. Like, hey, don't you remember when we were kids? Hey, aren't you so and so? What happened to you? Get away from me, scumbag! Yeah. You know, <laughs> and and then yeah. you know, for my own school, pretty much across the board, that's what happened to them. And then now, there a lot of them are waking up from the stupor because you know, here we are at the end. I mean, in a way. Or whatever God has, I don't want to limit anything. But I mean, here we are at a certain point where, uh, you know, where I'd say people take a, they reflect, and they're either going to be brokenhearted and, you know, and and just cry the rest of their lives, or they're going to realize that this is all a process. But anyway, those people are sort of now that they've been divorced and the kids hate them and every everybody hates everybody. You know, here it is at the end. Was it worth it? You know, I mean, that, forget the New World Order for a minute. These are people that now are facing old age with completely broken lives and broken families. What looks so good and promising early on and so permanent. But anyway. Well, and to answer your question, I do think that uh, I think it's going to drag on longer than we'd like. But I do think it is going to end up in a pretty big conflagration where a, a large number of people are going to uh, be destroyed and die. There's going to be a lot of, uh, about as bad as you can imagine. I, I do think it's just going to, because it has to, because that's how the demonic, that's where it goes. It just gets worse and worse, and it gets more corrupt, and it, that's ahead of it, you know, is the ultimate 
demon, the ultimate hater of man, of right. anything that's of God that's good, and they're not going to end until they uh, attempt it to destroy it all and in a big uh, self-destructive meltdown. So, so um, they're... Hell, I think that's a ways out. Yeah, but I know time goes so fast, it's really not that far out. Yeah, yeah, so people you are know, selling you know, out. Outside, you know, so people are selling out to save their own hides. That's what's going on now. They're they're joining up to, yeah, to, to yeah. and they're suddenly becoming uh, whatever they need to be leftists, communists, uh, politically correct. They're joining up because they think they're gonna they, they see this bloodbath coming, and they feel they're gonna they're gonna take yeah. steps to uh, to to survive it uh, by being uh, friends with the uh, the devil, if you will. <laughs> well, yeah, friend, they don't believe in God. Friends with the they enemy. Don't think they're gonna have to answer. So they actually think somehow, you know, if the nukes fly, for example, um, that if it's targeting a city that they're in, somehow they're going to escape that? I don't think so. I mean, if, if that does go, if it goes, I mean, what are your thoughts on nuclear? You, you think God will prevent that, or do you think, I'm sure people are capable. No, of, I think we'll see it. No, I think we'll see it. I, I, I think it's not as... Um, Devastating is, uh, I mean, you look at Hiroshima and Nagasaki and look at those cities now. So it can be survived and people survive it and mm -hmm. they know that. And I think they, they, they're going to have it down to what they think is a science where it can be limited and there'll be all kinds of horrible repercussions. But uh, um, no, I definitely think that we're going to see that. Wow. And I have no uh, doubt. Let me, and sooner rather than later, you're saying. Yeah, just because time moves so fast. I mean, uh, if it's 2020, 2025, that's not far away. I mean, we were doing these shows yeah. eight years ago, nine, ten. Yeah. I gosh, it's, I mean, it's I, I amazing. I the, the first show with you in 2004 or five. Yeah. And here we are ten years later. Wow. And, um, you know, at that time I wasn't so sure we we would see this date the way we are well we're still here kind of <laughs> trucking along but look how fast that's gone so when we say yeah by 2025 you know we've got a nuclear wasteland going on and people surviving that 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 seems far off in one way but it's going to come fast i mean it's, it's the way time is moving so fast that's really not that far out but like you're saying it's they've already important. they've already have plans to manage the after nuclear thing not a, not simply yeah. a, not like a road warrior thing where you just have this random kind of you know chaos but it's it, no it'll, yeah it'll be managed they've probably got the locations they've already got figured out where they're going to have the relocations where they're going to have the survival cities all that stuff is i'm sure all planned out mapped out and they're absolutely soulless cold calculating scientists about the destruction you know they they believe they're going to manage the whole thing, and for the greater good. They actually believe they're. Doing well, I know that the chemtrail flyers think they're do they're saving the environment. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, among other things, yeah, yeah, they feel like they're saving uh, the environment. They're destroying. Yeah, they think they're they're destroying through with the chemtrails. <laughs> but they've been told they're saving it, and that's good enough. So they've been, they've 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 been shown some yeah, quasi science that says. You spray this over these cities, then you ask yourself the question, well, if it's really atmospheric, how come they just spray mainly over cities and not across the whole globe? You know, right. they, they just spray where it's going to be moving in. Okay, now, yeah. well, I want to leave them today with a little good news. Okay, so what's going to happen? I feel like, okay, I'll, I'll just start again here. I feel that there's a raising of consciousness going on, you know, to, to get into some of that Eastern terms that you know you and I know so well but we get in trouble for when you say the word consciousness that automatically gets them <laughs> you know what I mean but still it's that that's the only word that applies so the consciousness seems to be raising and I'm becoming aware of sort of a multi-dimensional you know future that's just marvelous and getting little glimpses of it now I know you're kind of like a kindred spirit on that same journey what do you think about what I just said I, I think that for those that are born of the Spirit <clears throat> and that are sold out, sold out to God and have actual faith in God 
and uh, Jesus, the Lord, God, that um, what what I, uh, I'm experiencing the same thing. I mean, he's he's moving me through this minefield and uh, the, all the same anxieties and stresses and struggles that uh, that I've always had, not being of the world and not getting the, the benefits and the, the, the breaks, you know, I mean, that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, I've never felt more uh, invincible and impervious to anything and everything that the dark side can throw at me and at us. Amen. And it's by that access to the spiritual dimension. And it, in that dimension, there's freedom, there's faith, there's actual love, holiness, I mean, it's great. Beauty. And it doesn't. This whole thing is just a stupid little, like a cartoon uh, that these maniacs are designing. Which and this thing, it's just a bunch of dust in the it's wind. A game, it's just game coming show. and going. They think they've got these great plans. Yeah. No. Nobody cares about that. Yeah. It, it, it's well, just garbage. And so I just feel like I'm just kind of walking through, you know, debris in the street, untouched <laughs> uh, and really unfazed by yes. any of it. That's a good image, so debris. That's how, I, that's how I see that. It's, it's, it, we're just walking through debris. It's just like a, it's already a post-apocalyptic world. Hey, you wanted to talk a little yeah. bit t- today about um, the music business, and I know that you and I, uh, we talked earlier today about uh, doing a track together and I'm or, or tracks or whatever, just collaborate, just get something going, you know? So I'm, I really look, I, I want to just chime in and say I think that would be fantastic. Um, but we, your son Jackson's had a lot of, you know, success with his band and first regional success, and now caught the eye and the ears of producers out in. Well, I don't want to say too much that I don't want to talk out of you know turn, but you wanted to say something about the fact that you were in the music business, and you remember this, folks, from earlier interviews with uh, Bro T here. We talked about being in the music business, but then you see God had another plan, and in in you know. You, you know, it was all there before you, and then you sort of walked out of it. Because Brother Thomas, for those of you who don't know, yeah. he's a really excellent singer. And I would imagine you're singing as good, if not better, now than ever before. I'll bet you anything that's true. Right? Yeah, oddly, getting, getting older and better. And better, age, because you've thing. learned more control, more you can do more stuff with your voice. It's, yeah. You know, yeah. So... Yeah. So now you have in your own family the same thing you were faced with, and you, you saw Babylon. You saw, you know, you made a conscious decision. You weren't going to sell out into that. I don't know whether you right. thought, because I don't want to, I don't want to be presumptuous here. But I don't know that you thought there was another way, or did you conclude that there may not be another way? That you might as well hightail it out of there because it's just you saw the corruption and you just didn't see any way that you could maintain your Thomasness and keep on with it. And so, you know, so you left. Right. Is that right? And then, yeah, and I, a, I've always felt, yeah. And I always, I always felt there would eventually be something, uh, to be done, but it was going to have to be on God's terms and God's way. Mm-hmm. Cause I got right up to the gate and I was talking to the producer of the Beatles and Bowie and Serper Tramp, uh, Ken Scott, uh, big time producer yeah. guy. Um, sure. He had his own phone number, and he was he was ready to take me on, and they were going to break me in Britain and then bring me over to the states. And I got right up to it, and I realized it was that moment that I had. Over, luckily, when I was younger, I had kind of seen the future on it, and I realized there was probably going to come a point where I might have to choose between God and my dreams and my my musical uh, passion. And I had already made the decision when I, if I got to that point, there had to be God. But I was, and I, so I had already made the decision, but I was kind of still part of me was holding out hope that, you know, I could ride both rails. Yeah. <laughs> and people were always telling me, oh, you can do both. Oh, you can do both. And I'm, I kept thinking, no, nah, I don't think you can, but I nah, will try. And I got up to the gates and saw, nope, you can't. I couldn't. And I, and I, so I had to just turn around and shut the door and go, and, go somewhere else. And, and now, yeah. here we are. The acorn doesn't fall far from the yep. tree. No, and then Jackson, I always knew Jeff from when he was a baby. Uh, I, you know, you know your kids, and I, I knew he was going to break out in some fashion early on at a young age, and he did. And um, wasn't sure it was going to be music, uh, but the second I heard that he 
had a band together, and I mean, he barely could play guitar. I mean, he barely, he's naturally gifted. He can pick up anything and just start mastering it, but didn't really have a lot of experience or none. And he just kind of started this thing up, and I instantly I saw, oh, this is what's going to happen. Jackson, all the doors are going to open for Jackson. And I, I fought. I mean, I worked to get where I got to. It wasn't easy. I didn't have any really doors open up. I, I went up to him. I, I worked my way. I paid my dues, as they say. He didn't. He's not paid any dues at all. It's just the things, the dominoes are just falling down like uh, leaves in front of him. So I could, and I could see that uh, in the spirit. I could see, oh, he's got, he's got the golden pass, and I, I have a feeling it's going to get huge. And this was back when he didn't. They had like two songs, and they were playing in the basement, you know. And then I've just kind of been on the sidelines, um, haven't been interfering at all or anything. I, I'm hands off, you know, other than a few comments here and there. And he, we've talked in the past, you know. He knows my story and my warnings, and uh, he's savvy to all that, but. So anyway, two years now he's had this thing going, and it's just marched along. They still only have uh, when they play out about ten songs. I mean, when I was playing, we had forty-five original songs. You know, you couldn't play anywhere unless you had that could play like for four hours. He goes up, they play for forty-five minutes, and you know the world just you know is oyster. It's it's, it's uh, very interesting to watch unfold. And so now we're on the precipice where I really think. Uh, the way it's looking now, could, God could have a whole other thing in mind, and um, and the whole thing makes me, on one level, nervous as a father because I know what the what the business is, I know sure. what the world is, and what's required of you know ninety nine percent of the people that make it. Um, but I also, God told me early on with Jackson um, concerning some of the spiritual decisions. He's a Mormon. He became. He married a Mormon girl and became a Mormon. And uh, I was a little uh, plummoxed by that initially. And then God told me, I've got this. I'm in charge, right? And I thought, yeah, that's right. So be happy. Be happy I'm in charge and I've got out of control. You know, just... And I've, I've, stay, I've made my case to him early on, kind of explained what I thought that was all about and the difference between that and uh, biblical Christianity, you know, true Jesus. And then, uh, you know, haven't gone over it since. He knows what I think, and uh, we don't get into it right now. And so anyway, there's all these issues. Uh, me being a kind of a fundamentalist, sort of semi-right-wing, conservative, uh, Bible-thumping, no, you're awful. you know, reformed Calvinist <laughs> dude, and he's, uh, he's, <laughs> he's going out, uh, you know, as a, a Mormon pop star, and I'm sure that angle will be uh, played up, so there's all these uh, well, I am, issues and tension. Well, I feel tangentially involved, too, because of what you said to me, whereas, you know, on, as a side thing, we might do something, you know, where you get you and your son and me, and we oh, co right. cook, cook something up, so in a way, I'll be seeing you know that that look here i can tell i can sum it up for you okay this is like i'm in the spirit kind of right now here's what's going to happen basically the lord's going to use all this to do this work that's beyond any of our imaginations there's something going on in the spirit and it's all going to be for the good and for god for the glory of god somehow that you know but i that that's what i got just now just that Definitely. something very positive nothing well, that's what it Nothing negative. I think that's right on, because I've thought of that. No, i thought that however it goes, God is going to be glorified, and he's going to use this as a, as a platform and an opportunity, and it's just going to be very interesting to see how it unfolds, and we've, we've got a ringside seat to it. I mean, he's in L.A. right now with yeah. a you know, big-time producer, and I, I expect the next thing to happen is the record labels are going to start bidding, or start a bidding war, because they're banned. Uh, they look like the, I call them the band of models. I mean, they all are like, look like models. They've got the whole package, you know, they're just like made to market. Yeah, they're, so I, they're I could youth. be wrong, but I think it's just going to go. I think they're going to be huge. And so then what? Then it just, I think this going to be interesting. I'm glad you're starting up your, uh, interviews again because i think as we go on uh, you know over the next year or two people are going to want to hear about goes, it to kind of have a ringside yeah have a ringside seat and you know some involvement i mean i'm i'm being pretty deliberately hands off with him i don't want him to feel like i right, i'm the guy i'm the music guy that's what i wanted to do let me tell you how it's done sonny you know, <laughs> no not you're not like that, you're not like that at all 
In fact, most and parents... He appreciates it, and I get more... You get more knowledge. Out of it, you know, by yeah. not doing that. Because he's not guarding up and feeling threatened or like I'm trying yeah. to horn in or anything. I've just been pretty hands-off, like, hey, you know, let's just be careful, and I'm here for you. And we get to watch their dog, which we love their dog. We well, a lot of big dog lovers. A lot of what things. what's happened on this end has been, you know, I buried myself in the studio for, you know, years here now with the the with a kind of a second, you, you know, childhood and career in life. You know, with mixing and mastering. You know, I nobody told me to do it. I didn't know I was going to do it. You know, it's one of those right. things, just like Jackson in a way. It just sort of fell into place. You know, I didn't do cut my teeth on yeah. coming up through the studio system and apprenticing with so-and-so and so-and-so and whatnot. But I've got, you know what I mean, it, it, with all the practice or all the work, it's just, it's come up to that level where I, I'm, you know, interfacing also with producers who've, um, you know, done things and, and having their ear and things and, and, and there to help them if they need. You know what I mean? I've come up to like where I got some respect in this thing. So it's, that was unforeseen too. And yet... I haven't changed, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not, right. you yeah. know, nobody expects me of, like, the producers I know and the people, um, you know, that I know, that are my contacts and whatnot, even when they come over here, they're not trying anything. with it. No, one, no one's trying to, you know, secretly get me into any club. You know what I mean? They accept me for exactly who I am because I don't present myself as anything else. Could that possibly be? Or, I, I, I think... Yeah. It's not like there's like that. that. Go ahead. I mean, it, it, look. Go ahead. Okay, you go ahead, brother. T. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I think it's like what you're describing is kind of that walking through the debris. You know, I mean, just kind of remaining untouched as long as you're, you know, locked on to God and He's first, and you glorify Him. Right. You right. can. You're untouchable in a way. It's there's a whole way to do this and stay true. Yeah, and I just think it's interesting that we're having this conversation right now, and then we're going to get ready to do some tracks. And I guarantee you, those tracks are going to be, <clears throat> those are going to be very interesting to people. I don't know what they're going to be, folks, but I know that um, all the tracks that I've been involved in, whether it be with, uh, you know, the DCP project or the things I've done, which have gone along with kind of the prophetic thing of the flow, if you will or whatever, it, they've all been leading somewhere, they've all been d doing something. I mean, it's, it's been really, it, it's hard for me to actually put into words, but it's, uh, it's all been working together. And now the interview things, this being our first interview, so I naturally wanted to have the interview with you because we, that we started all this, and, and you, you started with me in the yeah. inter interview thing, that this is being worked in. And, and, and actually, it's another way, too, to integrate the music and present the music as well as because we're all musicians we're, we're I mean here's brother Thomas I mean, we're like yeah. poets and writers artists musician we you know that's what we are as human beings that's like the, our reason of that's what God made us so you get so that gift the Lord demands we use and at the same time we're also doing talk shows and 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 spiritual words and things like that because that's also all part of a, a part of it I've never seen anything like it, though, this sort of wedding of music. But it makes sense because you've got, you know, the Psalms, yeah. for example. The Psalms are, mu are music. We've been putting some to music, and, and people really like that because they're, they're not getting a certain kind of cookie-cutter music with the Psalms. And, yeah. and so I think, yeah. you know, I don't know. Look, I, I, can't, I can't assess it, but I know that you couldn't take, if you took the music away, I don't think you would have the Zeph report, and if you took the Zeph report away, you wouldn't have the music. I just think that's somehow there's some. It's all it's all the same thing in a sense because it's all words and frequencies and tones and shades and choices and mm -hmm. brush strokes and colors. And I don't know what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm getting I'm, I, okay. The, yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, I know you get me. It's on us. No, I I know you get me. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, it's, yeah. you know, that's, that's not the issue. You get it. Of course you get me. I get you, you get me, and we all get, get each other. But then there's people out there who haven't been listening, folks. And this is, um, this is all exciting. I'm very excited right now, even though I just heard the most horrific things yeah. from Brother Thomas imaginable. Then there's this other side that's going on where what, you know, like I could look at, um, 
remember the lambs are rising kind of thing? I could put your son in that category. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And you were yeah. saying that we'd be like on the stage. He, well, yeah. he's 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 on the stage right now. He's in the you know th this is maybe what people want. Maybe they don't want everyone to be a bunch of sellouts because it's so predictable and so you're not guaranteed to getting the best musicians that way either. So okay, well, right. thank you very yeah. much. Um, That's a hundred point. Thank you for being here, brother Indeed. Thomas. And I really appreciate yeah, it. Was great. I really appreciate you being back nice on the. To talk to you again. It is nice to talk to you, and and we we will be getting together. I guess our lives have been going in parallel, without um, completely intersecting. But they seem. But now it just seems like everything is converging. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I, uh, uh, friends, fun. you've uh, uh, been on the Zeph Report, and this is. Uh, the first interview we've done in years, we, I say we, like I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm completely MPD right now, but no, not we, me, um, but it's the first I've done in a long time, and it, because I think it, it's, you know, you, you need it maybe, I need it, it just seems like we need to keep the conversation going and expand it, and then further integrate the show, and we're going to be doing another one probably, I'm sure, with um, Brother Thomas regarding, um, you know, whatever's going on, but also uh, presenting some music. And, you know, when we present music, I think what people really like is when they hear the story of how it got produced. I'm also working with Kelly coming up uh, next week we're going to be recording. And so I'm really looking forward to that because that that's a, a, a gal that has an amazing uh, songwriting capability and, and voice and uh, just like Brother Thomas. And so there's going to be a lot to present. So I guess the interview thing has to start going because it's that's I I don't know about you, but I really love that when I'm hearing an artist being interviewed and then they play the track, you know, and find out where where this yeah, or that. I love, yeah. I love that, don't you? I've, I love that since way way I in the that stuff up. yeah, and you find out where they were at yeah, or I, I love that. you wonder why they wrote a lyric the way they wrote it or whether they were depressed. And and I've tried to do that with Brother Thomas. I've tried to do that with podcasts where I, I'll do a podcast about a song I did, but I can't, I find that, again, that's like talking to me about my, th it, someone else would have to talk to me, and then it would be more interesting. You know, if I present it, it's just like, I forget, I forget to say stuff, or I, you know, it, it, it's weird. It's, it's, it's a weird thing. Okay, folks, until next time. Then, hey, one, one, one last thing. Go ahead. Uh, uh, we can, one of these times when we talk again, maybe in the summer, uh, I'm going on a Bigfoot expedition with my son Isaac. We're 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 going to be uh, researchers, Bigfoot researchers. I'm way into Bigfoot right now. Oh, <laughs> so, and there's yeah. one up our canyon. So we, that wow. that's another thing I want to talk about sometime. I yeah, think be fun. Well, maybe we'll drive our RV up there and Calvary. join you. Yeah, we'll we'll drive our RV up there, and do we were meaning to drive the RV to Salt Lake and and meet? Um, and we. Uh, we're, we're, you know, with gas being what it is now, now is the time to jump in the RV, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Folks, you've been on the Zephyr Report, right. and, and we'll, you know, and we'll see you, uh, we'll see you when we see you, probably next time. I'm, I know there'll be a next time. So fasten your seatbelts. Live a, live a great life this week, next week. Um, get up there in the spirit and just give everything to the Lord. Trust the Lord above all else, and then let everything else be der deriving from that and you'll have a better time of it. Okay. Just another routine case. It shouldn't be like any other. I guess we're going to have to have this uh, dialogue now. Guards, leave us for a minute. Exactly what has been taken away, your peace. It's not of this world.
dead in about 20 minutes. You might take my This wouldn't be no, happening to you. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand anything. I have been, I've been over backwards for her and for her people and people like this. I've been around them my whole life. I understand them. But the law is the law. I have to, could I have to uphold the law or not? Is it a law or is it not a law? Is it the way we live or is it the way we, you want chaos? You want everything to be in chaos? There are rules here. I gotta follow the rule. I don't understand why you are me. Why am I supposed to feel guilty? What did I do wrong?